Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis. Let's talk about rheumatology. By the way, every Saturday there is a new rheumatology video, so please subscribe. Today we'll talk about aspiring the joint. We have talked about taking a good history, performing a physical exam, mastering the labs. We have had a bazillion labs. Today, let's aspire the joint and do a joint fluid analysis. With that being said, now let's get started. Before you understand the pathology, let's first understand what's the normal. So you stick a needle into the patient's knee. It doesn't have to be the knee, any joint, but mostly the knee. So you stick the needle and get the fluid, send it to the lab. The lab is going to comment on a lot of stuff. First, color. Normally, the fluid here, the joint fluid, should be colorless or straw colored, exactly like this. The aspect or the clarity, it should be clear, not turbid or opaque or whatever. Consistency, it should be thin and stringy, like this. Very thin fibers. Viscosity should be moderate. How do you know this? You break the test tube, I'm not kidding, and drop the fluid from the needle or from the test tube. So let's do it like this. Here is the nice test tube that includes the joint fluid. It should be colorless to straw, so let's make it this color. So what you do is that you first, after you run all of the tests, you get this test tube and break it into half. Just smash it, baby. Then this fluid is gonna fall and it's gonna make some fibers, like you're eating spaghetti. Then you examine the fiber, you look at them. If it's like few inch long string, it's moderate viscosity, which is normal. It shouldn't be too low, it should, the string shouldn't go to, up to the ceiling. It should be moderate. And once you do this test and repeat it over and over again, you tend to be good at it. White blood cells with differential. What's the normal white blood cell count? In this sample should be less than 200 white blood cells per cubic millimeter. How about the neutrophils or not? The PMNs are not only neutrophils, they are neutrophils, basophils, xenophils, but let's call them PMNs. They should be less than 25%. What if they are like 90%? Think septic arthritis. How about the normal red blood cells? They should be non-existent or one per cubic millimeter. The sample should be free of bacteria, fungi, and viruses. The glucose should be slightly lower than that of the blood. So let's say the patient blood glucose was 60. The sample should have like 50, 40, something like that. Should be lower, but slightly lower. Now let's apply this to a patient with osteoarthritis. Is osteoarthritis an inflammatory or non-inflammatory arthritis? The answer is non-inflammatory arthritis. Very nice. So everything should be normal in the past slide, except the white blood cells are going to be 200 up to 2000 per cubic millimeter. Do you remember what was the normal white blood cell count? Yes, less than 200. In osteoarthritis, since this is not normal, it's a disease, it's going to be between 200 and 2000. Osteoarthritis, by the way, is the most common form of joint disease, period, end of issue. It's a disease of the elderly, commoner in women than men. Obesity is a risk factor. Also, strenuous exercise is a risk factor. I'm not talking about going to the gym once every month. No, strenuous is like boxing, wrestling, something, uh, football, soccer, something like very severe. It's a risk factor for osteoarthritis. It's like the tires on your car. The more you use them slash abuse them, the faster they're gonna wear out and you will need a new joint baby. If the diagnosis is uncertain, examine the synovial fluid. This is a very important rule to remember forever. Let's say that you have a patient, you're not sure. Is this osteoarthritis, a rheumatoid arthritis, or septic arthritis? It shouldn't be that hard, but if it's uncertain, examine the synovial fluid. Hashtag tap it, baby. Joint fluid examination is diagnostic in infectious arthritis, such as rheumatoid and septic and lupus, not lupus, not infectious, uh, what else, Lyme disease, etc., as well as microcrystalline arthritis. We're talking about gout, pseudogout, and pseudo -pseudo gout. Never pass the aspirating needle through an overlying plaque 
of psoriasis or cellulitis, otherwise you're gonna transfer infection and you'll be an idiot. And don't pass the needle through your lab coat either, because chances are your lab coat is dirtier than the cellulitis. That's why many hospitals now forbid doctors from wearing lab coats, because they realize many doctors don't wash them frequently enough. And you thought we were going to save the world. Think a second time. <laughs> Types of studies on joint fluid aspirin. So after you tap it, baby, and get the fluid, what kind of tests can you run? First, gross examination, which I've talked about in the first slide. You comment on the color, on the aspect, the consistency, the viscosity, etc. Then the cell count. You count the white blood cells and the red blood cells in the sample. Microscopic examination to look for what, whatever. Um, you can look for the needles uh, of gout and pseudogout, etc. And culture, if it's a bacteria, if it's septic, you can culture it and you can do gram stain, but gram stain for joint disease is garbage. It's 50% sensitive. It's horrible. So by gross examination, let's comment on the aspect. It could be transparent, translucent, opaque, and bloody. And this is the first time for you to realize there is a difference between transparent and translucent. Transparent is just clear. This is completely clear, beautiful test tube. So when it's transparent, it's non-inflammatory and including normal. Cool. Then we have translucent. This is mild inflammation. Then we have opaque, purulent inflammation. Now we're talking, let's talk about septic arthritis, for example. Then the bloody, traumatic tap because you're an idiot, you injured a blood vessel while tapping the joint. Trauma, it's not you, but it's the patient. The patient had a trauma in his joint before coming to you as well as bleeding disorders, or as they call it, that like the sophisticated professors, hemorrhagic diathesis. Okay, let's, let me ask you a question. Where do you think osteoarthritis fit? And the answer is, it's transparent. It's non-inflammatory, so osteoarthritis is here. Let's talk about the cell count. Let's talk about white blood cells. Normally, less than 200 per microliter or cubic millimeter or whatever. Normally less than 200. Non-inflammatory less than 2000. So between 200 and 2000. Inflammatory 2000 up to 75,000. Perilant is more than 100,000. Okay, it doesn't have to be more than, how about 90,000? It's still perilant. I'll still consider it perilant because septic arthritis is a medical emergency. If you say, this patient has a white count of only 90,000, he's not having septic arthritis and the patient is dead, you're toast and stupid. So if it's 90,000, treat it as septic arthritis until proven otherwise. Next, the microscopic examination. We use polarized light microscopy. By the way, polarized means it's light that goes only in one direction. This is not just like the normal visible light, because if you have like a light like this, and it, the light goes in many directions. Yes, in a straight line, but in many directions. Don't confuse straight line and unidirectional. However, the polarized light, it's polarized. It goes into just one direction. Laser beams are like this. They go only into one direction. Okay, wanna prove? Okay, go into a dark room and shine a laser light. It's not gonna light, but only one spot. Only that spot is gonna be lit but the other stuff, you're not going to see the stove, the oven, the table, only the spot that you are focusing on. But if you shine just a visible light in the room, yeah, there is a bright spot, a less bright spot, a less, 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 less bright spot, but you can see, not with polarized lights. Okay, by the way, polarized light microscopy can be negative birefringent, depending on the, the needles, and positive birefringent. Negative birefringent, such as monosodium urate, positive birefringent, such as calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate deposition disease. This is gout, this is pseudogout. Gout is negative, pseudogout is positive. Gram stain, for it's a microscopic examination for septic arthritis, but the sensitivity is 50%. This is like flipping a coin. It's horrible. It's 
unreliable. So let's say that you are reading the newspaper. Scientists have been working for two years and they have a new test that's 50% sensitive. Okay, and all of the journalists are happy and all of the public are happy. This is just stupid. 50% is just like flipping a coin. I hope these scientists hadn't worked for the past two years. We could have saved money, time, and human resources. Here is the most important slide in this video, so please do without your stupidity for just a minute and then after the slide you can retrieve it back. Here is normal, non-inflammatory, inflammatory, purulent arthritis. Let's talk about the volume. We're talking about the knee here. I don't care about the volume. Let's talk about clarity. Clarity. We have transparent, which is normal. Transparent, which is non-inflammatory. Translucent to opaque is inflammatory. Purulent is opaque. Color. Normally, it's clear, colorless, or straw-colored. Non-inflammatory is going to be yellow. Inflammatory will be yellow to opalescent. Google opalescent because I couldn't draw it. It's, it means multiple colors. Purulent, yellow to green. Okay, how about the white blood cells? Normally, less than 200. Non-inflammatory, less than 2,000. Inflammatory, 2,000 to 75,000. Purulent, more than 100K. Then, let's talk about PMNs as a percentage of the total leukocytic count. Normally, less than 25%. Non-inflammatory, less than 25%. Inflammatory, we're talking here, more than 50%. Purulent, more or equal to 75%. Let's culture. If it's normal, it's going to be negative. Non-inflammatory, it's going to be negative. Inflammatory is going to be negative. Purulent of septic arthritis, usually, it's going to be positive. So, a normal joint is here. Osteoarthritis is here. Rheumatoid arthritis is here. Septic arthritis is here. Period. End of issue. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'll send you my notes and I have 50 hematology cases and many other stuff. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.